Right before we jump into this video, if you'd like me to send you a free guide to capturing motion in low light situations, just look for this orange box over on fronosphoto.com, put your name, email address in it, hit send it, and I'm gonna send you that guide for free. Jared Poland, fronosphoto.com, and this is a review of the Sony 20 millimeter to 70 millimeter F4G lens. Now it is not a G Master, but it is a range, you did hear that right, of 20 to 70, and it's a straight F4. So there's a lot to talk about this lens, and we'll get to that in just a minute, but where did I go to photograph it and test it? Well, I took it to the Philadelphia Museum of Art, where I went inside to photograph the Matisse exhibit, then outside to photograph the art museum itself, the stairs, because we always do that, and then I took it out to photograph my niece and nephew who were running around the park, because this is the type of lens that it is. But Sony is calling this, or marketing it more towards the creator slash vlogger, which brings up the question of why doesn't it have image stabilization built in? And part of that reason is because Sony has something called active stabilization in the camera that you turn on, which they say mimics optical stabilization, except for the fact that it has to crop in a little bit to compensate for it. A couple of the reasons why they didn't put it in this lens is weight, price and size because everything goes up when you start adding more into a lens like this. You all know I've been very vocal about the whole creator slash vlogger type of gear that they're putting out and we're going to compare this price-wise at the end of the video to a bunch of other Tamron and Sigma lenses and also some other Sonys to help you decide if this lens is something you should look at or totally just pass because you just think that it's a pass. But let's take a look at the outside of this lens. I mean, it's a pretty light feeling lens. It doesn't feel too heavy. It feels okay. It doesn't feel like a piece of plastic. When you zoom, it's an external zoom. So this is 20 and this is 70. Look, 20 on the wide side is very nice. Normally you're used to 24 to 70s or 28 to 70s, but in this case, you go a little wider. And that's one of the reasons why Sony is saying it's great for vlogging because you've got 20 millimeters. So if you're going to shoot a lot of video, just understand that if you're on a gimbal or something, as you zoom out, that's going to change the balance and it may throw off your gimbal. So keep that in mind if that is something that you're looking to do. Now you have an aperture ring, which I, I don't understand why we even worry about putting these aperture rings in lenses at this point, even if you're shooting video, you're still controlling it inside the camera at this point. But you can do it clicked as well as de-clicked because there is a switch right here. I click that and now it's no longer clicking, it is smooth. Another thing that's nice is that it actually locks in on A. So you will less likely accidentally tweak this, but in my opinion, it shouldn't be there at all. You have two custom buttons here on the side of the lens, and then you also have your A, F to manual switch right there. In terms of filter thread, you have a 72 millimeter filter thread. You have your lens hood right here that comes with your lens. And of course, as I always say, use your lens hood. You look kind of dumb if your lens hood is like this. And I'll just tell you that yes, if your lens hood is like this and you're shooting, it makes you look more like an amateur. Just put your lens hood on like this and always shoot like this. I don't care if there's no sun in the way or sun outside that might give you some flare. Do not have it backwards. Nothing yells amateur more than having it backwards. Or your hair. Thanks, Steven. Thank you very much. So to put a few things in perspective, when you are at 20 millimeters, you're shooting at a 10 degree field of view wider than at 24. And it's a 19 degree wider field of view than at 28. So yes, when you go to 20, you're getting a lot more than you normally would get at 24 or 28. Obviously it's wider, but with that comes some possibility of distortion. And we saw this when I was taking pictures. For example, let me just pull this picture up right now. As you can see from the outside of this image right here, there is some strong vignetting going on, but that's the same thing that happens with the Canon 14 to 35 that we've seen with the F4, because there's a lot of lens correction being done digitally inside the cameras. Now, Lightroom hasn't been updated at this point at the time of making this review yet, because when you bring the image into Lightroom, it, for whatever reason, has the lens correction on, and then once it goes ahead and propagates the file, 
it disappears, which is kind of weird, but when they update Lightroom, you'll be able to put lens correction on, lens correction off. Now, I personally turn it off inside of the camera, and if I ever wanna turn it back on, I do that in Lightroom, but at this point, we couldn't do it. But you can see from the EVF footage when I was taking this exact photo that you do not have that vignetting there because lens correction is being done inside of the camera, which is basically being done in a JPEG preview. Also, we put together this test image where you can see one is done with the raw file and one is done with the JPEG and you can see the correction being applied. So now that we got that out of the way, let's go into the Philadelphia Museum of Art where there was a Matisse exhibit being done and I went with my dad. That's right, he's wearing this uh, beautiful Adidas blue jumpsuit head to toe with uh, some, some Under Armour shoes that are blue as well. That's some strong drip I heard some kids saying. He's like, yo, that's some strong drip, old man. And he's like, I don't know what drip is, but but maybe it's what happens at three in the morning when I'm trying to pee, you know, prostate. Now my goal when photographing in the exhibit was to see how this F4 handles. I love having wider. I love 20 millimeters. I think that's great. I think it's a really good range of 20 to 70, but we'll talk more about the fact that Sony also makes a 24 to 105 that has optical image stabilization built in that could be another option. Do you rather have a little bit longer as an F4 or would you rather have the wider side? And we think that obviously Sony thinks that you would wanna go on the wider side if you're shooting videos. Now, personally, you know I shoot a lot of stills. That's what my primary focus is. So that's what I focus this part of the review on. Let me jump in here real quick because I wanna show you this photo taken with the Sony 20 to 70 F4 and edited with Fro Pack 3 starting with Zoolander. Then we've got Prestige Worldwide, November Rain, Mentos, King Contrast, Eckert, Capone, Almost Famous, and Fifth Element. But check this one out from Fro Pack 1 called Skittles. One click and boom. So look, if you want to speed up your raw workflow or give yourself a great starting point or you want presets that actually work like ours, we created 15 custom Lightroom presets that you can check out right now at fronosphoto.com slash fropack3. While you're over there, you can play with the sliders to see the befores and the afters. And if you decide to pick them up right now, they are currently on sale. Or if you want to get the triple play bundle, which includes Fropack 1, 2, and 3, and Skittles, you can save even more. Now, let's get back to the video. Since I just mentioned the 24 to 105 having the optical stabilization built in, and this lens doesn't, Sony's claim or what they tell us is, well, that's okay. You could just put on the active mode and you're gonna get stabilization. But when you put the active mode on, what it's doing is cropping your frame. And from our tests, it looks like it's almost cropping from 20 millimeters to 24 millimeters. So you actually gaining that much by not having the stabilization built in? I, I don't think so. Right? The fact that it has to crop to 20, almost 24 millimeters with the active stabilization kind of defeats the whole purpose of dropping all this money on a lens like this that you think you're getting 20 millimeters and in fact you're really only getting 24 because it has to do that digital stabilization. The point here is that something like the 24 to 105 has the optical stabilization, which means you don't have to put the active uh, digital stabilization on, meaning 24 is actually going to be 24. A lot has changed. The technology keeps changing, but if you have a 20 millimeter lens and your claim is that, well, just put on active mode to stabilize it, then it kind of negates the fact that you have a 20 millimeter anyway. Anyway, let's jump back into the art museum where we have these Matisse images. You can see from my final images, the bowing that you get because lens correction wasn't on. But again, with the electronic viewfinder in the camera, you can see that the corrections were already applied. So I was composing it as if the corrections were applied, and when I get it back after the fact, they obviously weren't. Now when we move forward in the gallery, my dad took a closer look at this Matisse painting or sketch or whatever the heck they call it, and he wanted to you know, get closer. I will tell you that I set off an alarm when I was looking at Monet. I was trying to read the sign. They're like, you must stay 18 inches away. And I was looking down and I'm like, well, this looks like 18 inches to me. I didn't really say that, but I couldn't read the thing. She's like, well, you have to back up because you're too close to it. It's not like I was gonna throw some paint against it and then super glue my hand to the wall and be like, this is for global warming. No, I wouldn't do that because that is kind of dumb. This, I, I like the angle of 20. I like the range of 20 to 70. I've said that a bunch of times now. The images are fine, the colors are fine, the sharpness is fine, the focus is fine. What I will tell you though is on the 
A7 IV, which is what I used to shoot these images because I chose not to use the A1 because if you own an A1, do not buy this lens. This lens is not for you. You spend more money, you get better glass than something like this when you own the A1. The viewfinder looks so dark when I use the F4 lens because F4 isn't gathering as much light. So it was much harder to see through this EVF because it just comes across much darker. The images are fine, right? When we go outside to the Rocky Stairs, as people call them, it's really the stairs leading up to the Philadelphia Museum of Art. And as you can see outside, the bowing is extreme because lens correction is not on. It's wiped out when I bring it into Lightroom because I want to make that decision. So if you do have this lens or any other lens for that matter, there's a lot of lens corrections built into Lightroom. You can see the with it on and you can see it with it off. Sometimes I like the natural vignette that I get around the outside, but do I like the bowing that you get? I, I think Nikon, Canon, Sony, I think everybody is doing this now. This isn't just a Sony thing. So. Most of this stuff is baked in digitally because we're seeing a lot more digital stuff being done inside cameras that you're not even aware of that's happening until you turn it off and then you're like, do I like that better or do I not like that better? Again, the colors, the tones, the sharpness, fine. The focus, fine. But next, to keep testing the lens, I took my niece and nephew out to a park to play and run around. It's the only time you can take photos of kids at a park is if you're related to them or you're with the family or you're with someone who's like, yes, you could take pictures of my kids. And I will tell you, there were other kids at the park and I made sure not to get them in my photo for once. In the past, I wouldn't have cared. I would have just taken pictures of every kid. At this time, I'm like, I'm just going to focus on just my niece and nephew. Though I, I should reiterate something about public spaces and public places. In the United States, it's not illegal to photograph people in public places, even kids. That's just how it is. I know some people might get upset about it and you should use some taste or tact and decide that no, I shouldn't be a random guy and just go photograph kids in a park. It's just weird and you shouldn't do that. You should ask permission or you should be there for a reason or with someone. But the whole thing is if you have no expectation of privacy, then someone can take a photo. That's what the law is. If there is no expectation of privacy, then you can take photos. That's a public place. Even if someone is breastfeeding, I'm not gonna take pictures of someone breastfeeding because why would I do that unless they wanted me to, but they are in public doing that. But it's normal. There's nothing wrong with someone breastfeeding. Just keep walking. It's normal. Just go about your business and let the people feed their kid. That's fine. But just understand that in public places, there is no expectation of privacy. If you're shooting through someone's window, you're an asshole. That is not right. And that you can get arrested for. All right, finally, in the park with my niece and nephew, we've got my niece in the foreground. We've got my nephew in the background. He's looking all like, what's going on? Why isn't this drone thing working that he's trying to fly? The only reason I'm showing you this is because this is F4 and I want you to see that she's slightly out of focus and he's more in focus. Again, the focus is fine. The colors are fine. The sharpness is fine. From a photography standpoint, it's a good lens. I'm getting good results with it. Let me jump in here and ask you, do you like podcasts? Well, if so, we have a photography podcast called Frono's Photo Raw Talk that comes out every Friday. If you haven't checked it out, you can download an episode wherever you get your podcasts or head on over to fronosphoto.com slash podcast to check out the new episodes as well as all of the past episodes. Now, let's get back into the video. Now, I zoomed out to 70 millimeters, put Jace right here in the middle. He's holding up his little drone that didn't work too well. And Juliana over here on the right-hand side has a little GoPro-esque Polaroid because she's like, we're gonna get more likes and shares if you do something like this. She was trying to make a video. It was very interesting to hear her talk about likes and shares as if people were watching live, which is interesting because remember this photo of Jace hanging off of this railing right here. Yeah, she's like, hey, Jace, why don't you do something extreme for the likes and shares? She actually said that, which gave me pause because I had to explain to him and, and her, like, look, you should make videos that make you happy and you shouldn't make videos that are all about likes and shares. Steven, what should the clickbait title be for this video to get those likes and shares? Yeah, this is a dilemma that we go through, but seeing eight-year-olds talk about this, 
it's not a good place to be. After they put the drone away, they moved over to the jungle gyms and Jace was just sitting here down on the bottom of the slide. This is at 70 millimeters again. And you can see back here in the left-hand side that the bokeh is there, it blows it out. You've got nine blades for those who really care about how many blades you have. It's fine, right? It's a good range. You can get great images with anything if you know what you're doing. So that image is fine. The next image, the focus was fine. It found him between the monkey bars. We already saw the one of him hanging there with Juliana taking the video of him. And then finally, more of a portrait type of shot. I like the colors. I like the tones it's nice and sharp it's a good lens like don't get me wrong it it's a nice lens it works well it's just expensive we're looking at 1100 ish dollars for a lens like this that's not even a 2.8 i say that because we've got this collection of other lenses right here i'm gonna pull out a lot of these are 2.8s. We've got the 28 to 70 2.8 from Sigma. We've got a 20 to 40 2.8 from Tamron. We got the 24 to 105 Sony with the OSS, which is the optical steady shot built in. Yes, this is a little heavier than the 20 to 70, and it's not as wide, but it's basically the same size. And then we have a 24 to 70 2.8 Sigma art lens. The art lens right here is $1,099. Photography standpoint, I am buying the 24 to 70 art lens all day of the week if I had to decide between this 20 to 70 f4 versus this. That's from a photography standpoint. Now, this may not be my go to when it comes to shooting video, but it's a solid, incredible art lens. And for similar prices, from a photo standpoint, I'm going with the Sigma and I'm not buying this lens at all. But if you want more range, then a 24 to 105 might be better. Now keep in mind, this is a five-year-old plus lens. It might have some technologies that may not be as good as the newer one at this point, but I'd rather have 24 to 105 as a creator. I can do more with that than a 20 to 70. Do I like having the wider field of view, that 10, uh, 10 degree wider field from 24 to 20? Sure but there's other trade-offs that you have to keep in mind. Let me tell you the prices of these other lenses. I already said that it's 1099 for the 24 to 70 Sigma 2.8. The Tamron 20 to 42 8 is only 699 bucks. So if you want the 20 millimeters to 40 millimeters, yes, it's not the same range, but it's a heck of a lot less expensive if you wanna go wider. Tamron also makes a trinity of lenses, a 17 to 28, a 28 to 75, and there's even a 70 to 180, and they're all priced right around a thousand bucks. So before I tell you if you should buy this lens, let's do the wind tunnel test as well as the sniff test. Let's start with the wind tunnel test because we've got them all up here. Let's see how it does. <gasps> no, it didn't perform as well as the others. You can tell it's a very scientific approach right there. Sniff test. Does this get a don't buy it sniff test? Is that, is that what it is? It depends. It's a don't buy it from a photography standpoint. I also don't buy into the creator vlogging lens, but I get it, the, the 20 on the wide end is nice. That's great for vlogging. But if you turn on the active stabilization, you're at 24 millimeters, which is cutting it close for when someone is trying to vlog. And generally speaking, you don't really need that 70 when you are vlogging. Something like the 20 to 40 might be a better option for you. I probably wouldn't spend the seven or 800 bucks that this lens is across the board. If I'm picking a lens in the same price range as this, I already said it, I'm going with the 24 to 72.8 art lens because it's a 2.8. I just think this is overpriced. If they had this in the 799 range, which went along the same area as some of the Sigmas and some of the Tamrons, then I'd be like, all right, 799 or 699 for a new photographer coming to the game or a new creator, they might be like, oh, I could possibly swing that. But then they start looking and you're over a thousand bucks for a lens. You're like, damn, as a salesperson at a camera store in the past, how do I sell someone on a thousand dollar lens that's an F4 right off the bat when they're just picking up their first camera? I don't because it's impossible. Look, Sony did a nice job with the 20 to 70 standalone. It's fine from a photography standpoint. I like the colors, I like the tones, the sharpness, it focuses, it's nice. It's just a little too expensive for my taste. What do you guys think about it? Which one of these lenses would you buy? Do you think the 20 to 70 is a fail from Sony standpoint, or is it something that you would purchase? Let me know down below. Thank you very much for watching. Jared Poland, Fronos Photo.
www.thebrandnewsnetwork.com. See ya.